but you can type any name or alias. Oh, thank you. And, and what yeah. eClicker is, and you're going to see there, there's going to, in, in probably about 15 seconds, a question's going to come up. And eClicker allows you to do assessment. Um, may, maybe not the kind of assessment you would do um, for points. It could be point-based, but one of the things, uh, assessment is obviously a critical part of teaching, being able to get a sense of, did somebody understand the lesson or did they not? Or maybe it was part of the lesson. But being able to do assessments can sometimes be very time consuming. And so generally, it's generally quizzes or tests or projects. What eClicker allows one to do is get a sense of where a class is at in a very sort of fluid, seamless way. Um, and you can then clarify, oh, hey, maybe I need to spend a little bit more time on a certain amount of topic. So, uh, I'm going to put a couple, you're going to see a qu couple of questions pop on the board, and you're going to have, I think, 30 seconds to answer it when it comes up. You're going to want to scroll down, there should be a question. So you don't want to say yes or no, the question is, does social media alter and civic participation? So what you see that comes up here is, uh, is a graph that shows not only the whole class, how everyone weighed in, but also the teacher. What I then have the capability of doing is going into, I have a rank, so I can go in and see how everybody individually uh, weighed in on that particular question. Uh, the students don't have that capability. Uh, so what's great about this is you get that instant assessment, and when I've done this in the class, like students just love it. You know, I've never seen them get excited to take an assessment. Probably it's the interactive <laughs> ability, but also they get to see how they sort of um, did in comparison to the class. And so, in this case, everybody seemed to agree, even though we didn't get a chance to really go into the depth of the topic. But what's also really nice is you can embed uh, images as well, and, and visual learning is something that all of us are really trying to incorporate. There's been some interesting research in cognitive science that says if you're just lecturing or if you're just reading, then the retention the next day is only going to be at best 20%. If you add an image, it goes up to 60 so I can show you just a couple more questions, and there's a, a wide variety, true and false, multiple choice. You'll see this next one here that's a little more granular. You can set like a, a default timing for like a minute, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, indefinite. Is the first time they used it as teachers, they took all this time to prepare and kind of create a bank of questions like you're getting today. But I th they're starting to see now that they could actually write a question on the fly yeah. just to get that instant sense of does everyone really understand what a direct object is or not in a way that if you were just asking for raising, the research is that if you just ask for a raising of hands or something like that, there's a lot of uh, peer interaction that you don't really realize is necessarily happening at first. And, and this is just like a very quick, it's just a quick tool, so it's one of a gazillion tools we could have violated, but yeah. but, it, but it's a, it's kind of a fun one. So if somebody is not sort of understanding what seems to be a really key point, uh, then you can get a sense of who that is. And students obviously don't want to be like, I don't understand. I mean, some are quite confident in being able to do that, but you know, some aren't. And so being able to be anonymous in this kind of fashion. Um, I think is, is definitely You're able to identify which student isn't really quite catching on by, by the response. Yeah, so, so in this case, like I have a tab here um, where it says rank, and so I can go through and, and see how everyone responded to whatever sort of question sets I put on here. Uh, and then I think over time you, you're able to see trends and and, and refer to that kind of data and, and see the bar graphs as well. And there's always a tendency to kind of space out, and our motto is the students should be doing more work in class than they are. And so, yeah, this does keep, you know, they realize it's their responsibility. If, if they're spacing out and all of a sudden they're answering a question, it, it, it builds in more accountability um, into, so they're not just going to sit there and, you know, let Mr. L go on and yell, you know, I just won't raise my hand or whatever, or I'll look down or whatever. It's like, they have to do it. It gives and them more of a chance of being an active learner in the class. Exactly. <laughs> and we do this a lot already. I mean, in Spanish class, they're up with fly swatters, and they do Jeopardy in science class. So it's, it's not that this is would be new, but it would, it would be another tool in the toolbox. And because you can do it so quickly, it would be something you could do in the last few minutes of class where you may not want everyone up out of their seats with fly swatters or, or what have you.
know, at times, as, as Susie was saying, at the beginning of class, you might want to do this to see what kind of retention the overall class had from you know, the previous classes. But if it was something that you felt like, hey, like this is preparation for a test, and this is quite important, then I might want to actually kind of hold on to these results um, as a way of going, hey, I think you might need to come in during study hall today or um, class because clearly you didn't understand the questions. That's okay. But then being able to target that, sometimes if you're doing the other activities, it might be hard to remember who didn't hit that spot with ice water. So. <laughs> Okay, this is a sneak, sneak preview with a comprehensive class um, in the fall, but this is called iStudies Pro HD, and this is um, the digital planner that all of the students will be using, and there's some just awesome, awesome aspects of this planner, and we're just going to show it for maybe 30 seconds, so you can just kind of... But anyone can get this, like if I want to use it, if I want yes. it, I can get it. Yes, you could. Yeah. And so this would be like today's view. So for the week, you could have your whole schedule. So if you were a student at the beginning of the year, like in our paper planners, there's a place for the kids to put in what I have, what period of each day. Now they'll be able to do it digitally, and it can go on through uh, time in the planner so that they have they know their um, schedule at a glance. It allows for the school or the teacher or the administration to push certain data yes, to the device. And I just want to highlight on mine, because this is mine, not, not a student's, right? So like this is my technical support kind of appointments for the day, but then I had to enter these these biology classes or what, what have you. So it, it syncs with uh, the Google Calendar. And it's just completely integrated. So. So there's not multiple calendars. Right. Well, and actually right. on the week view, it so will be able, so students will be able to see, you know, if it's Fun Fest week or whatever from the school calendar will automatically appear. There's also reminders that can come up. So if students, you know, have a project and they've said they're going to work on it at a certain time, a reminder will come up. Science project. Harder to ignore. <laughs>